leadership class, but we want to make sure you guys are aware that Wisconsin Youth Ministries and our Turn off your youth team, <laughs> um, we're proud of you, and we want to invest in you, and we believe in order for us to see true apostolic identity and true apostolic uh, revival in these coming years, we need leaders that are teenagers to rise up and take charge and realize who you are, realize who God is and the power that he has given you when you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. I believe there are young people here that God can bless you with the gift of prophecy and the gift of tongues and interpretation. You don't have to wait until you're 80 in order to speak in tongues and interpret and, and have a gift of prophecy. I believe there are young people in here that you can lay hands on the sick and they will recover because Jesus Christ has that power and it's inside of you. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. I believe it. You guys right here are the cream of the crop. This camp, there's about 260-ish kids, but you 35-ish young people are our heroes. They're, you're our all-stars this week. I believe in you, and I know that what Brother Williams and, and uh, bro what Brother Rick Bailey and what we're going to be doing uh, here in these classes, you're going to leave this camp empowered and enriched by what is being taught. So please take heed in what is taught Listen and put it in action even today. Put it in action and move forward. And I trust that when you look back at Camp 2010, you'll say that was where I really began to surge in my ministry and surge in my leadership. So I believe in you. And I'm so excited that uh, Brother Williams is here to minister to you this week. Amen? Amen. God is awesome. Yeah. Awesome. You guys are awesome. All right, guys, so we are already behind schedule, just so you know. So isn't that fun? We just start off behind. How do you like that? But uh, anyways, I do want to take some time to get to know some people. Um, we may do this a little bit later in the day, but for the sake of faces, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to call out a name, and if it's you, raise your hand or something, just so I can see faces and names. How's that sound? Just real fast. Kind of awkward, but fast. All right, Esther. Ryan, Ryan Bogner. Hey, Ryan, I know you too. Laurel. Yes. Hi, Laurel. Hi. I know all these faces. This is good. <laughs> Lydia. Hey, Lydia. Nicholas. Hi, what up, Nick? How about Ben? Ben. All right, Mariah Drexel. Mariah. How about Caleb Drexel? I know you. Caleb, I know you. <laughs> How about Cassidy Fernandez? Oh, I know. <laughs> Josiah Grape? Grop. Grop. My bad, bro. Forgive me. Close enough. Blew it already. All right. How about Seth Graper? Uh, yeah, he's hiding back there in the back. I do know him. I'm watching him really closely. Jonathan. Jonathan Herman. Hey, Jonathan. How about Chelsea? Is it Chelsea? Caitlin. How do you say your last name? Wow, that's awesome. You don't have to teach me that. Trenton. What's up, Trenton? Mariah Johnson. Hey, Mariah. How about Abby? Hey, Abby. Naomi. Did I get that right? Yeah, Naomi. Naomi. <coughs> Patrick, the violinist back there in the back. Mariah Narlock. I know Mariah. Hey, Mariah. How about Kimberly? Hey, Kimberly. Awesome. Kevin. Ace. About Samantha. Awesome. You getting all this, Rick? Have yeah, you know I've gotten all. They're probably all from your youth group. Right. Rick's got the best youth group on the planet. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what I figured. He knows them all. All right. How about Heather Poland? Yes, I know Heather Poland. Emily. All right. Jordan. How? Hey, Jordan. Uh, Kayla. Kayla Rhodes. Uh, Alex. Alex, Brooke, John, and Analia. All right, I see you guys. I know you guys. And Michael. We have a Michael. Michael. Melissa. Brothers and sisters, huh? You kind of look like. Trinidad. 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 
Jasper, say that right? Got Jasper here? Oh, we've lost Jasper. That's not good. First day we already lost somebody. Drew. What's up, Drew? How you doing, man? Thank you guys for taking that time to do that. We got some handouts I want to give everybody so you can follow along today. Brother Rick has got a bunch of pens. If you need a pen, we're going to hand these out real quick like. Okay. Um, Why don't we just pass the box around? Hey, Trent! Hey, Trent! Apparently, Trent! 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 Pass that around back there. You guys need that guy. Sorry. Are these the Pensy Robots? They are the Pensy Robots. Make sure you use the same one you used this morning. We Everybody got handouts? Got some extras? Did you get one, Seth? All right, you guys, I want you to know that I, I really appreciate this opportunity to be here. I have a good friend here with me, and most of you know him, and that's Rick. And he's going to take part in this week with us, too. An amazing guy. And uh, I just want you to know what I'm about to say. I really mean this. I really do. If I had an option of preaching the night services or doing this class, I would pick this class. Amen. This is the coolest gig at camp, all right? I really mean that. And I want you to know how thankful I am that I have just a few days to speak to you and speak into your life, hopefully, and Rick will do the same. And it's such a privilege to be here. And I have been thanking God since the day I found out I would get this opportunity. And I'm really excited about it. And I do know some of your faces because I've been at a few section services lately and stuff. And so hopefully we can talk more. We do want you to talk throughout this time. Uh, I'm going to try to share some information with you, and you'll have some handouts every time. And then hopefully when we're on schedule, we'll have about 30 minutes to talk and do some, we've got some kind of worksheet things we're going to do a little bit together and try to really engage you. But this week, each one of you have made a commitment. You've almost recognized that God is calling you out of the crowd. God's drawing you out of the crowd to be leaders, to be in ministry, to serve the kingdom at another level. And so this week, in love, we're going to be very real with you. We want to bring you reality. We want to challenge you this week so that you can become the leaders that God wants you to be, okay? And so what we're going to say in the next three days are very important. And um, I would really encourage you that if you would just apply these, this information, these principles to your life, I promise you that you would find it will bless your life. And I don't say that just because I wrote some of it. I say that because... Leaders are invested into this kind of stuff. And, and my mentors have talked about this stuff with me. And these are positive principles that affect people and make great leaders, okay? And so I ask you just to digest this. If you have questions, feel free to ask questions. Even if we're outside of this session and you see me wandering around, Rick wandering around, just ask away, all right? I hope to give you my email address before the week's out. If you ever want to email me, just shoot it off, okay? Um, shoot off that email. I don't mind that as long as your pastor doesn't mind that. And youth leaders, I would love to just talk with you or whatever. 
Uh, I want you to know tomorrow we're doing a session called Snapshots, and each one of you will receive a book called Living and Leading in Ministry by J. Mark Jordan, and it's an amazing book. And our session will be built around that book, and it's going to be a blessing, and I hope you'll take that home and you'll really invest yourself in that book. Rick will tell you it is a tremendous book. Incredible it is book. a great book. Just bring so, 50 bucks. Yes, $50. $50. That'd be awesome. We'll rack it up, dude. Let's do it. <laughs> really eating good in the cafeteria. <laughs> So it's going to be a great session. So today, I really do want to challenge you, though, with something that is very, very important. Wow. I'm going to try not to be too fast here when I share this because I know you have handouts. But we are running short on time. But this is very important. This is something called the fitness plan. Okay? There's one thing you're going to have to understand. Effective leaders are spiritually fit. Okay? They don't just play this game and show up at church and do their thing and then leave and never think about God again until the next service or their next opportunity to counsel somebody or preach a message or teach a Sunday school. They are spiritually fit people if they're doing what God would want them to do. And so you have to embrace this right now in your life. You should start setting the standard for yourself that's going to follow you throughout every stage and age of your life and that you're just going to be founded upon. So right now you need to start learning how to be spiritually fit. So that whether God may have you in a ministry now or he releases you into a ministry in the next few months or years, you have already set some spiritual disciplines in your life and you are spiritually fit to do the job that God's calling you to do. Now, let's look at this on a practical level. All right, think about it. In the world of fashion, okay, Louis Vuitton doesn't walk through the mall and look for just a crowd of girls and go pick out a, a girl out of a crowd and say, all right, I want you to come market all our products and take over our creative design, and we're just going to give you our name and ask you to just start driving our product. They don't do that, okay? That wouldn't be smart, right? Because they're looking for someone that's fit in fashion, that knows, hey, what, what's the cool colors? What's the trends with the seasons? What's in? What's out? That understands fashion, understands that industry. That's a person that's fit. That's who they're looking for. And that's who they put on the job. Guys, think about this. All right? Football. The Green Bay Packers don't show up at the game and then walk through the crowd and say, all right, you're going to be our quarterback tonight. We're going to have you play and be quarterback. And pull some guy out of the crowd or some lady out of the crowd and throw him on the field and make him quarterback and leader of the team for the night. Because that would be epic fail. Can you say epic fail? Epic that would be an epic fail. All right? It would be horrible. If they called me out of the crowd to be quarterback, it would be so bad. I'm telling you, it would be horrible. All right? It wouldn't be wise because I'm not fit to be quarterback, right? But they calculate, they calculate their choice, okay? They look at people. They look at skills. They look at people's understanding, okay? And they make a calculated decision on who they want to be their quarterback. And that decision is based on how fit someone is physically and mentally for that position. They look for someone that's physically fit and who knows the game, how to play the game, knows the playbook, all right? And it's the same way in God's kingdom. God is not just wandering through various locations looking for young people that have no spiritual disciplines in their life and that are not Amen. fit at all and then going to just call them out and throw them into some ministry, okay? Because you want to know the playbook. You wouldn't know how to handle the game. You wouldn't be prepared to be the person that God wants you to be. He's looking in crowds for spiritually fit young people, okay? And I know it takes time to mature and there's a process, but he's looking for young people who want to be spiritually fit, who are spiritually fit, to put them to play in the game, right? Because that's where he has his most success, okay? And God's about success. He has a plan. He has a will and a purpose for each one of us, okay? And so this whole session is built around being spiritually fit and it's very simple all right you must understand now that if you are going to be an effective leader you have to embrace god's fitness plan very simple what does it take to be spiritually fit i'm not going to blow your socks off right it takes effort really simple effort okay it's not going to just happen overnight you're not going to feel God's call in the ministry and wake up the next day and you're this amazing spiritual leader. All right? It doesn't just happen. Okay? 
it actually takes some serious effort. You have to start investing yourself into the things of God if you're actually going to become spiritually fit, someone that he can use, all right? The current culture expects strength and success without putting any effort in to achieve it, okay? And we have to be careful that we don't let ourselves get caught in this current culture. We live in it, and it's easy to get trapped by it. It's easy to let it flood into our walk with God and just be complacent and a little bit lazy and think that God's just going to give us all these things because we're entitled to them because we're His children. Okay? And we can get caught in that culture. And that's the way it is. And some of you, if you're in Section 1, you've heard me say this probably if you came to a Valley Rally or Ignite Rally. If you came to one of those, you probably heard this. It, has anybody ever heard of something called the contour belt? Anybody heard of a contour belt? Oh, is that the thing that like, vibrates and gives you eyes or something? You got it, bro. They, they, they market this thing on the internet, and I'm sure it's on TV probably. And what it is is it's this belt, and you can put it on, and there's a power button, and you hit power, and they say you can play, you can play gaming, you can watch TV, you never have to get off the couch, and you will have a six-pack without question that will change your life. And you don't have to do anything. All right? I used it. I tried it. I got a 12-pack. And I never did anything. 12. It was amazing. It's, I've kind of lost my discipline. and I, It ran out of batteries. <laughs> and there was nothing in the instructions about running out of batteries. They just said put it on, hit go, and sit on the couch. So, so I've fallen apart since it ran out of batteries. But the reality is, is that's the mindset. And that's what we think sometimes, okay, if we're not careful. God called me at camp. I'm just going to put his spiritual belt on and hit go, and I'm not going to do anything, and I'm going to be this amazing leader. And we actually live life that way, okay? And then guess what? We never become who God wants us to be because we don't put in what? Effort, all right? So you have to understand that if you're going to be the leader that you feel God is calling you to be, that I know you can be without question, you're going to have to take some time and put some effort in, all right? There's not some miracle belt you're going to put on that's going to make you an amazing, effective leader. All right? You're going to have to put in some effort. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God. Listen to that. Study. How many people know what studying is all about? Studying takes effort. Mm -hmm. It does, right? It takes some serious effort to study. All right? I've been to college, and I actually made it out of high school, believe it or not. And studying was not easy. It took effort. I could not play. I'm not even going to say what gaming console, because that would tell you how old I am. And study at the same time and be successful, okay? I had to put some effort in, right? Let's finish that scripture. It says, uh, thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. It doesn't say a lazy man. It doesn't say a weak man. It doesn't say a couch man, okay? It says a workman. Effort, right? You hear that? Workman. It takes effort if you're going to be approved unto God, okay? And if you're going to rightly divide His Word. If you're going to have that Word in your life, you're going to have to invest some things in order to have that. So, here's what you got to understand. Number one thing you're going to need if you're going to be spiritually fit is you're going to have to make a commitment to the effort that it takes to become a spiritually fit young person. Alright? The rest of the stuff that I'm going to share with you won't matter if you're not willing to put in the effort. Okay? If you're not put, willing to put in the work and to study, to show yourself approved unto God, the rest of the day will not matter. Very simple, okay? You're going to have to put in some effort. So, when you're willing to embrace the effort, and you're willing to activate that effort in your life, and you're willing to study to approve yourself, all right? And you're willing to become a workman in God's kingdom. At that point, you can step into God's plan, His fitness plan. And that's what I want to share with you now. His fitness plan is pretty simple, all right? There are four components to a pretty good fitness plan, all right? I'm not applying any of them to my life physically, as you can see. This is all natural right here, right? All natural. Mind but you, mind you. Bailey's all natural. So he's got some serious strength, people. Serious strength. I, heard, I saw him this morning lift a spoon when he was eating his cereal. Fruit Loops. And it, it, he didn't even like... It just was easy. It was just like, boom. I mean, there's Fruit Loops, like six Fruit Loops in the spoon, and he just lifted it right up like it was nothing. 
So, I mean, this guy's got some serious, he's beastly, all right? He's really beastly, all right? So, and I just, I watch him, and that's why I'm so strong, too. So, anyways, that's where I get my strength. But there's four critical components. Number one, you can probably tell me some of these. You have to exercise, okay? I am not physically fit, and there's a pretty good reason. I rarely exercise. Or once in a while I play basketball. Then it reminds me how old I am. And then I take a year off. <laughs> I don't exercise very much, okay? If you're going to be physically fit, you've got to exercise, all right? Exercise, this is, about, this is about building your strength and stamina. Uh, James 2 and 20 says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Works is a form of exercise, okay? If you are into exercise, you know it's work. It's not easy if you're in a good exercise plan. So we see this, and we see in James 2 and 26, it refers to it again. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works, without some exercise, is dead. If you've got a lot of faith, that's awesome. But if you're not exercising your faith, it's dead. It's useless. It's worthless. It's, it's not very good to God because he can't do anything with it. There's a lot of people in this world that got faith. You walk up to them on the street and be like, you believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. I believe in faith. When's the last time you went to church? Well, I don't know. It's uh, Easter 1923. You know? They have a lot of faith, but they're not exercising it. Okay? They're not applying it. They're not acting on it at all. And so you have to exercise. Exercise is about, as I said, building strength and stamina. So here's what you have to understand in the parallel to the spiritual walk with God. When you exercise, you're running on a treadmill, you're lifting weights, there's all these different things that you're doing if you exercise, okay? Whenever you are exercising in the spiritual, spiritual atmosphere at all, it's about doing things that are going to build your strength and your relationship with God, and it's going to build your stamina, help you endure, Okay? And there are a few things that I would throw out there that can do that. One, worship. Worship builds your strength. You know, worship is really for God. But what's so cool about God is when you do something for Him, it just He just naturally does something for you. And it's really about God. When you worship, you actually are blessing God. It's one way to, that you can actually bless God. I heard one preacher say, the worship service is not for people, it's for God. Amen. And the preaching Amen. is for people. Okay? But when you begin to worship God, what does the Bible say he does? He inhabits the praises of his people. And when he does that, then you feel his presence and his power, and you are elevated. You are lifted, okay? And you are actually becoming stronger in your connection with God. So one way that you can build your spiritual strength, if you will, is to worship. Okay, It will make you stronger. And let me tell you, it takes effort to worship. It does really take effort to worship. And I don't have time, really, at all. To say much more than this. Worship is not just when you're at church clapping your hands amen. and jumping. Oh, amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. Worship is your whole lifestyle. Amen. All right? If you are not faithful as a Christian and you go to church and clap your hands and jump up and down, you're not worshiping, you're just praising God. Right. All right? It's not worship until your giving is lining up with God's principles, until the way you make your choices lines up with God's principles. Worship is a whole life thing, encompassing mm -hmm. thing, all right? all right? And so you have to understand that. That's like a whole other session, all right? But you've got to understand that when you apply some of these things we're going to talk about this week, and then you start jumping, and you start clapping and running and, and doing whatever you do when you worship, that's really worship, okay? It goes beyond praise. And it's your heart and it's your lifestyle all coming out and being handed to God. And that strengthens you. Okay? That makes you much stronger. Another thing that you can do in the realm of exercise is you can pray. Mm -hmm. pray is an, prayer is an exercise. It is not easy to pray. Okay? Oh, it takes serious effort to pray. I don't like getting up early in the morning. But it's a good time for me to pray. And so I have to put some serious effort in in order to get up and go pray. And then once I do get up out of that bed and go to my prayer location, it takes even more effort to get myself going to actually connect with God. Mm -hmm. It's that whole effort thing. But when I pray, it strengthens me without question. My day is so much smoother when I pray. 
it was just like a, probably about a week ago, I had a horrible day. And the day I'm like, God, I, that's, I got everything I deserved. I didn't pray this morning. The next day, man, I was praying. First thing. And I had the greatest day. That prayer strengthens you, okay? I've said it in some sessions before. The best thing you can do to help yourself get through a day in school is to pray before you go to school. Mm -hmm. Even if it's simple. It's the best thing you can do. Prayer strengthens you. I got a text message from somebody the other day, and they said, man, I, I don't think I can. Everybody was getting on this person's nerves, and everybody's just out to get me today, and I just can't find anybody I'm getting along with today. And I said, you should pray right. so that God can change you. All right? You should pray. You know why I know that? Because I had days like that, and everybody didn't seem to fit within my comfort level. And then really the problem was me, okay? And so God said, you should go pray, all right? And so it strengthens you. It's almost something that you're only going to understand when you try it. It's that old taste and see that he is good, okay? You're only going to get it when you try it, okay? So prayer is a way to strengthen yourself. Also, there is serving. You need to serve. God did not save you so you'd be a sponge, and just take everything in and do nothing with it. Serving is a solid way to strengthen yourself. It really is. It's amazing how much stronger you become when you're giving. When you're constantly giving to people. Alright? God lifts you. The Bible says that He lifts the humble. And those who have humility in their life. Those are the people He lifts. People who are servers are humble. They are humble people most of the time when they're sincere. And God just lifts them up in that servanthood. And so a way for you to strengthen yourself is to serve. Now, when we get done here, you're all going to have to write down how you're going to serve in the next few weeks, okay? We're going to have a nice little workout plan you're going to put together for yourself. And one of them is going to be how are you going to serve somewhere? In your church or in your school, how are you going to serve somebody, okay? A great way to strengthen yourself. Loving somebody is a tremendous way to strengthen yourself, okay? There are a lot of people that you'd rather just not love today. They're getting on your nerves. You, you just aren't fitting with them today. But you know what? If you show those people love, God will strengthen you for that. Okay? He will strengthen you. And the last one is giving. Giving is a tremendous way to strengthen yourself. Right? Now what's cool is these things strengthen us, and they also give us a stamina. This stamina that helps us just to endure. You know, and just keep going. What I think is so cool, and I'm actually about to share this with you, is in this next point, that when you do what I, I'm about to share with you, it actually will affect you days later when you're tired. The example is that in all these areas in which you could, you could give and, and strengthen yourself, you can't just give 50%. You have to give everything that you have to these areas if you're really going to become strengthened, all right? If you just give 50%, you're not going to have the strength that you should have when you're finished serving or praying or worshiping or giving, right? If you just give it half, it's not going to be successful. Success in exercise is stretching your muscles until they tear, and then they recover, and when they recover, they are stronger. Okay? Very simple principle. And what is amazing is that I've worked out with guys before, and we didn't do that. We, we got, you know, ju we extended just enough energy to feel like we had done something, but we didn't tear anything. And then I worked out with some dudes that like to tear stuff. And I couldn't walk for days. I mean, literally, these young people will tell you. I started working out with a guy named Nick in our youth group. He's one of our youth leaders. And, like, two other guys. And these guys were killing me. Honestly, I thought they didn't like me or something. It's like... <laughs> I mean, two days later, I am limping around the church. I'm, it's horrible. I looked really old because I was old. These guys were tearing every muscle in my body. It was killing me. But you know what was cool? I could literally feel my body working like six hours after I had had one of those workouts. I could, honestly, my temperature would still be high sometimes. You know how you feel when you get that workout? And that's what they told me. They said, when you tear those muscles... Your body is working hours after the actual exercise, recovering. And those, all those tears are rebuilding themselves to become stronger. You're burning energy. Your metabolism is rocking. And I could totally tell it, man. Two days later, I felt like I was still in the gym. It was just crazy, all right? 
And that's the reality, is that you're going to have to, you're going to have to do these exercises to a point where it hurts, guys. You're going to have to do this until it tears everything within you. It may tear up your life. Mm -hmm. But God may need to tear up your life so he can make something better of it. Amen. Okay? Yes, sir. That's what that's about. My muscle is weak. It needs to be torn so that it can recover and be something much better. And it's the same way with our lives sometimes. It's weak. Our disciplines are weak. Our worship is weak. Our, our character may be weak. These things can be weak sometimes because we're young in Christ. But when he tears us up, mm -hmm. when he gets in there and gets to changing things, and then you recover, you are so much stronger than you were before. And so you have to embrace that. You have to recognize that when you're worshiping, you do it till it hurts. Do something that you don't normally do. And you, I know you've heard that before. Get outside of your comfort zone because it hurts. It tears your pride up when you get outside of your comfort, comfort zone. Yeah. When you pray, pray until it hurts. Not until you're happy. Pray until God's happy. Okay? And that mm -hmm. might hurt a little bit. Pray until it tears. Serve people until it hurts you. Okay? you got to embrace these principles because they will change your life. There's a reality, and that is this. Too often we settle with just enough. Just enough worship, just enough prayer, and just enough encounter with God that we do not progress further spiritually. Last night in that service, I watched young people did just enough. And they left that service with the same blessing that they had when they came. They didn't go any further than last time they prayed. Not all of them, but some was just enough. And that's why those kind of students get the same blessing every youth service and every Sunday night, and then on Monday walk into epic fail. They have not progressed spiritually because they're not tearing their life up in their encounters with God, in their prayer, in their worship, so that God can create something much better. They're doing just enough. And so you have to you have to speak to God and you got to ask God. You got to say, God, what do I need to do in these areas that will literally tear me up so that you can rebuild me and I will be stronger? And you can start that tonight. You can start this tonight. All this is about starting now. If you aren't already doing this. Tonight. It's like, all right, worship time. I'm doing this till it hurts. God, tear me up. Tear my pride up tonight, God, so that I be humble and you can lift me up. Okay? It's prayer time. Tomorrow, I'm journaling like a madman. <laughs> I'm going to rock it out in my journal. I'm going to do it till it hurts. Okay? I'm going to write some stuff on my journal, God, as recognition that I have problems or that I have some failures that hurt me. And I'm just going to tear up my pride and I'm just going to lay it all out there in my journal. I'm just going to be real with you. And it's the same way with servanthood in these areas. You got to do it till it hurts, okay? The next one is this, and I got to move quickly. You got to have a proper diet, all right? Just because you're working out doesn't mean you can really eat anything, okay? I've done that before. I've worked out, worked pretty hard, still ate whatever I wanted, and I didn't lose a lot of weight. It didn't completely give me the results that I wanted. So you have to be concerned about your diet, okay, when you're physically working out. I don't, you know, start this amazing workout plan and keep just like tearing up and pounding down the fries with a thousand pounds of cheese on it, mm -hmm. you know, because that's almost canceling out my exercise. It's not really helping me, all right? I'm not pounding cookies at 12 o'clock at night, and it's not going to help me, all right? It doesn't fit in a really good fitness plan. You gotta exercise and then you gotta eat the right stuff. Okay, you gotta have the right diet. It can't be junk food. You gotta lower your calorie intake sometimes, and then you gotta have some healthy food that you're digesting in order for your fitness plan to really bring positive results. Okay? And it's the same way in Christ. Think about it. When you're gonna be spiritually fit, you must eat healthy. You cannot be consuming junk food spiritually. <coughs> And be fit. Okay? You just cannot do it. You have to have healthy food. Somebody tell me what could be junk food on a spiritual level. Okay? A spiritual plane. And you, you get what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Literally. There are things you can take in. It's just junk. And it's not helping you at all. Even if you're exercising. 
It's just junk. It'll just corrupt your body. It'll shut things down in your body that's normally going to help purify you, okay? What are some junk foods that you can invest in or intake? Secular music. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Ooh, being selfish. Gossip. Yes. So good. Prideful. Pride. You got to tear down your pride, guys. I have pride. I have to kick it around a lot. We all got pride. You have to recognize that. That's a really good one. Seth. Unforgiveness. You guys hear that? Mm -hmm. Unforgiveness is junk food. Mm -hmm. And I know you live in the real world, you get hurt a lot. People hurt you. Life hurts you. You got to find unforgiveness. Or you got to find some forgiveness. Sorry. You have to forgive people. You have to forgive parents. You have to forgive grandparents. You have to forgive the hurts that you deal with in your life. That's so good. You have to be forgiving. Another one? Anger. Anger. That's good. Young people do wrestle with anger. Disrespect. Disrespect. That's very good. Any others? Envy. Envy. That's good. Envy. You guys get that? Mm -hmm. Envy. Anybody want to be honest and say you wrestle with envy? I've wrestled with envy. You know what's amazing? Is that it doesn't matter where you're at in life, you can always find some way to envy someone. Mm -hmm. You can be a great pastor and see another pastor that you envy. Okay? You can be a great leader. It doesn't go away. Okay? It doesn't go away with position or our age or anything. And that's a very good one. And that's junk food. Okay? You can't do that. That's junk food. Anything else? That's all very good. Thank you for that. Those are junk foods that you cannot be eating if you're going to be spiritually fit. Okay? And there, there are many others, and I'm sure that God can show them if we're, to us that they're in our life. Okay? But those are junk foods. You can't do that. You guys got to find healthy things, and you got to eat that. Healthy things that you can eat. Okay? Philippians 4 and 8 gives you a great template. And I know we're all familiar with this scripture. Philippians 4 and 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think, and I put eat on these things. Okay? Eat on these things. Listen, that's a great template. Seriously, the things that you consume, you should compare them to that scripture right there. Just size it up to that scripture. Not to what I say, not to what Brother Rick says, not even to what your pastor says necessarily. Just look at that scripture. You know, when you're making a decision, what am I going to listen to? What am I going to eat? What kind of attitude am I going to have? All right. Let's see. Is this true? Is it truth? Is it honest? Okay. Is it pure? A great template, a great model for you to consider so that you can eat healthy. Okay. So here's what you need to eat in this fitness plan. You need to eat the Word of God. Okay. You need to eat up some devotions. You need to pound down some word, and you need to pound down some devotions. Okay. You need to have some uplifting books in your life. You got to have some uplifting books in your life. We got a lot of young people that read books, and that's awesome. But we got a lot of young people eating and reading junk food books. Okay. There's one in particular that I just don't like. And I know if I said it, some of you read it. Okay? I'm not trying to be mean, but I'm just not into it. Something called Twilight. Oh. Okay? But I'm not your pastor right now, so that's not my job. But does it fit Philippians 4 and 8? God's book. He can make the decisions. There's a lot of junk food we're eating. Okay? And God's like, man, I wish they'd read another book. We said read something about me. We said read something that would strengthen them. Amen. So to be the person I wanted to be. You need uplifting Amen. books. Okay? Amen. There's uplifting Christian fiction. It's yes. okay. It's good. You need uplifting books and magazines. Oh. Okay? And then the last one is you need to be eating some voices of wisdom. That's your pastor, your youth pastor. If you have a mentor, if you don't, you should get a mentor. Okay? These are voices of wisdom. Preaching. Preaching CDs. Preaching tapes if they still exist. <laughs> Podcasts. Okay? 
you need to eat that stuff up. Those are voices of wisdom. If it's preaching truth, that's a voice of wisdom that you need in your life to encourage you and lift you up. Okay? Mm -hmm. These are things, and we're gonna we're gonna create a little plan in a little bit and include some of these things. But these are voices of wisdoms that you need to eat. Okay? Mm -hmm. And you really should think about that. I'm telling you, God will use every one of you beyond your eat your own imagination. If you want him to, and you're willing to submit to his plan, and you'll start eating healthy food. Okay? He'll use you. He'll blow your mind. He'll blow your mind. Okay? He will do that. But you have to put in the effort. The next one is, if you're going to have a good fitness plan, if you're going to have a good fitness plan, you got to consume a lot of water. Okay? I hate water. Once again. I don't like water unless it's got like a lot of flavoring in it. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's like give me a Propel, I'll drink it up, you know. But I just don't like straight water unless I'm just like, you know, been in the desert for a month or something. And then I'm thirsty. Okay? But if you have a good workout plan, you've got to have a large consumption of water. And you cannot consume any other uh, drinks at another level necessarily. You just got to fill your body with water. And there's some specific reasons why you need that, okay? So when you're working out physically and trying to become physically fit, your body needs a lot of water. You can't just consume any liquid. You must consume a high volume of water. This is why you need water. It's not in your handout, but the next portion will be. The reason why you need water is this. Water helps remove the dangerous toxins that your body takes in from the air you breathe and the foods you eat, okay? Water cushions your joints. That's where two or more bones make contact. Water carries oxygen and nutrients into all areas of your cells. Water regulates your body temperature. And water keeps our metabolism working properly so we don't dehydrate. Okay? Now this is the parallel. When you are working to be spiritually fit, your spiritual body requires lots of the Holy Ghost. Out of the Holy Ghost. If you're fit, you have power. It, typically, a physically fit person has a little bit more power than someone that's not physically fit. The key to having spiritual power is the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts 1 and 8. Amen. Right? Most of us may probably be able to quote Acts 1 and 8. Right? Got any Bible quizzers in the house? All right, sweet. I know that the Bible quizzers, right? But ye shall receive power. power. Right? Okay? You receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Okay? And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria. Okay? In the uttermost parts of the world. You are going to receive power when you have the Holy Ghost in your life. And if you're going to be spiritually fit, you've got to have power. Okay? So let me share the parallel. And this is in there. You have got to consume a lot of the Holy Ghost in order to be spiritually fit. This is the reason why you need it. One, the Holy Ghost helps you remove the dangerous toxins that you take in from the air you breathe. In school, on a job, in your neighborhood with your friends, in the community setting. There are a lot of things that you consume that, that get inside of you. Even in your education system that you have to go through at school. And there's evolution and there's relativism and all these things. These are things that you cannot help. They're there. You're living life. You're in this world. So you're walking through school and you're surrounded by attitudes and music you'd rather not hear. And some moron shows a guy a picture on his cell phone he'd rather not see. And there's all these variables in your schools that try to mess with you, that try to get on you, that try to get in you. And you need the Holy Ghost to keep that stuff out of you. Okay? Mm -hmm. And when the Holy Ghost is properly working in your life, it can protect you. It can keep your attitude right. And your attitude keeps everything that gets on you from getting in you. Okay? And I've heard students say it. I went to school. I gave 100% today to God. And when I left, I felt horrible. Why? Why? There were spirits at school, there was music at school, there were drugs at school, there were all this stuff, and that stuff tries to latch on. Mm -hmm. And you leave school and you feel heavy. The Holy Ghost will remove that stuff. 
But you've got to have it working in your life, okay? And that's one of the reasons. Another one. The Holy Ghost cushions your spiritual joints. This is where dynamics of life make contact. Some dynamics are family, education, work, hobbies, ministry, relationships. you got to understand, when God calls you into ministry, there are so many dynamics that you have to be concerned about. And there are places and times where a lot of bones come together and make contact in a joint. And it's hard to balance family and ministry and trying to get an education. But when the Holy Ghost is there, it cushions that connection. And it gives you an ability and a wisdom to properly flow through that connection point, that joint, so that everything functions properly. Does that make sense? Feel like you're in science class? And when the Holy Ghost is not there, there's no cushion and there's a lot of bumping and uncomfortable and you're just in a lot of pain and your family's suffering because they're not getting your attention because you're giving it to the ministry and your grades may be suffering because you're trying to get some kind of degree and it really hurts that connection point. Okay? But when the Holy Ghost is there, it will cushion it. And it can give you wisdom. Okay? It can give you some wisdom and help you in that joint. All right? Another reason... The Holy Ghost carries life and wisdom into all areas of your ministry. Okay? Listen, you can have a ministry and it can be dead. Mm -hmm. Amen. It can be dead. Okay? It can lack a lot of life. Okay? You should have buried it a long time ago. Kicking a dead horse. And why is that? Because people lose the Holy Ghost. They lose the fire of the Holy Ghost that comes with, with living for God. It keeps everything alive. Okay? And they lose their wisdom when they lose the Holy Ghost. Okay? So you need that. It'll carry life into your ministry. Okay? And it'll bring that wisdom that you need to navigate through issues in life and in ministry and in leadership. Another one is the Holy Ghost regulates your temperature during hard times. Trust me. I'm a pretty easygoing guy. And I've been mad a few times in dealing with people. My temperature was struggling. All right? I was getting red. I was like a tomato or something. All right? And I wanted to say what I felt. I tell you, a couple of times the Holy Ghost yelled at me when it was like right on the end of my tongue. And I just like stopped. For real. It's crazy. And gave me something else to say. Okay? And it was the right thing to say. These moments will come. These moments come in your life right now, in your youth groups and in school. People mistreat you. Your temperature hits the roof. And you say what you wish you hadn't said. And the Holy Ghost can keep you from that. It can regulate your temperature. Okay? It can keep you going even kill, give you the right words to say, and help you manage your life well. Okay? Regulates temperature. The last one is this. The Holy Ghost keeps the reaction between your flesh and spirit working properly so you don't dehydrate and spiritually die. Because I'm not a scientist, but I can give you kind of an example. Your metabolism does that. Your metabolism works with the various chemical reactions that happen in your body. And it manages all these reactions so that your body processes everything properly. And your, your metabolism just kicks in and your energy's there and all these things, okay? Very simple science right there. And that's kind of the same idea. you got this, this reaction going on all the time, guys. Flesh and the spirit is constantly warring against each other. You can be the greatest person on the planet, and there is still a battle going on between your flesh and your spirit. Rick Bailey, the bomb, has a battle going on between his flesh and his spirit. Without question, we're just human. That's the way it works, okay? And so you have to understand that if you're going to have a proper balance... And your spirit is not going to become dehydrated and die. You have got to have the Holy Ghost working actively in your life every day. Amen. So that the what? The spiritual is prevailing over the carnal. Okay? But when the Holy Ghost is not there and that reaction happens, your flesh is going to win. And your spiritual guy is going to die. Okay? So very simple reason why you need the Holy Ghost. Example, very quickly, Samson. Who knows Samson? Got some Samson? People know Samson. People in our youth group have heard this a couple times in the last few weeks. You can study it out, look at it a little bit yourself. 
do some studying of Samson, but it's very interesting. When Samson had victories in his life, huge victories, killing thousands by himself. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord moved on him. The moment he was bound by a few men, the Bible says he did not know that God was not with him. Okay? His victory was there when the Spirit of the Lord moved on him. When the Spirit of the Lord was not there, he lost. It's just another practical example. You've got to have the Holy Ghost if you're going to have victory. In your ministry, in leadership, as a young Christian, as a great young person, you need the Holy Ghost working actively. When you have the Holy Ghost, I promise you, you will succeed. You will survive. You will prevail. You will be victorious. The moment it's gone, can you say epic fail? Epic fail. But I have some good news for you. Failure is not final. All right? right. But epic fail will happen. Okay? So don't forget that. Zechariah 4 and 6 says, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And the last one, and we're, we're done, is this. In a, in a good workout plan, you need rest. Your body has to recover. Some weightlifters who know about tearing their muscles... On Monday, they work the upper body. On Tuesday, lower body. The upper body needs a day of break. It needs a break. It needs to rest. All those torn muscles need to recover. Okay? It's the same way in your walk with God. Okay? When you're, when you're working this plan, and you're exercising your faith, and investing yourself in good things, and you're eating healthy food, and you've got the Spirit of the Lord working in your life, you need moments where you have quiet time with God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay? So He can speak to you. And He can pull all this stuff together. Okay? Make it what He wants it to be and release you to be a leader. Okay? I was driving to a graduation that I spoke at a few Fridays ago. And on the way, something hit me. I turned my radio off. And I said, you know what, God, I've been really busy. I haven't really heard from you in a while. I'm turning my radio off. I feel the Holy Ghost right now. I'm turning my radio off. You talk to me. You know what was so cool? Boom! He was in my car. It was so cool. And I was kind of like, oh. I was talking to myself because I'm crazy. I'm old. I'm like, dude, God's here. And he just flooded in. I felt God. I'm like, wow, this is cool. And it was my quiet time. I didn't say anything. And I just felt something happening in me, man. I felt like things were just... God was like almost just like putting all the pieces together and putting all my plan together in me, okay? And that what is going to happen, okay? When you find time to be quiet and say, God, I'm doing all these things. Now, I need you to pull it all together for me. I need you to arrange it the way it should be arranged. I need you to speak to me. Honestly, God will do something in that moment of rest. You'd be amazed at what your body does when you sleep at night. Mm -hmm. And if you look at science and you read about it, okay, and you talk to psychologists and these neuroscientists, they say that there's nothing better on the planet than solid, good sleep. And they say the things that happen when we sleep, they cannot even explain. Listen, the things that happen when you have a quiet moment with God is unexplainable. Unexplainable. And when you walk away, you're so much, you're so strengthened by that. And he's like, all right, you're ready to go. Go do what I've called you to do, okay? And you need a quiet time. So here's what we're going to do. You need to understand today, you've got that handout, that you need to be exercising. You need to be eating right. Okay? You need a lot of Holy Ghost. Okay? And you need to rest. You need to give God a chance to work on you some, okay? Now, we're going to take just a second because I know we're, we're way behind, okay? And we're going we're gonna to say a prayer of commitment together. You need to commit right now to effort. The effort. You need to say, all right, God, I'm going to put the effort in. I'm, I'm walking away from my con, contour belt mentality, okay? I'm going to give up the contour belt. It's out of batteries. It's not working very well, okay? And I'm going to embrace some effort. Okay? And let God move on you right now as we say a prayer together that he would help you with effort. And then we're going to quickly together fill out a, 
fill out this fitness plan, and then you can go, okay? Is everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. I know we're running late, and I apologize for that. But if you're okay with that, that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Let's say a prayer together. You say your prayer the way you want to. I'll be praying here. But you need to ask God specifically, help me put the effort in. God, I'm making a commitment to put in the effort that you require. Let's pray together. Lord God, I am so thankful for these tremendous young people. It's really truthfully evident, God, that they are willing to put in the effort because they're here this week, Lord. They've already put effort in to be here. I ask you to strengthen these young people, God. Let your power and your wisdom be with these young people, God, as they are willing to put the effort in. Lord, after this camp, I ask you to let them hold on to the commitment that they're making right now. That no matter what it takes, every day, they'll put an effort, the effort required, into their relationship with you. So that you can mold them and make them into the young people that you are calling them to be, God. Right now, Jesus, I release your presence in this room. I'm asking you to touch these young people, God. Solidify, Lord, the commitment that they're making right now with your presence, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's good, young people. Just reach out right now. Let him solidify this commitment that you're making with the Holy Ghost. That's good. Sunday.